Good morning, Mary. How are you? I'm first here. <laughs> we, we just had a very, very intense digital office hours that got really focused. So it's lovely to see you, Mary. Okay, thanks, Tara. Oh, I'm excited to hear everything too. And our Dina, of course, is here, the star of the universe. We can't do anything without Queen Dina. Ruth is back with us. Good morning, Ruth. Morning. Lovely to see you, my darling. And Tagan's in with that fantastic hair. You have the aspirational hair, my darling. What am I aspiring to? No, you have my aspirational hair. That's, <laughs> that's yeah, good, hair. good. That's, that's the hair. If I could just work out how to get that curve, I would do it, mate. Great. <laughs> and legendary Ian's back with us in the rain. That was a very intense digital office hours, wasn't it? My goodness me. Woo. Some powerful work got done there. Ian, love you forever, mate. You're legendary. And our favourite lifestyle location has joined us. Kirsty is with us once more. Um, I adore you. You know it. And, of course, there's Damien. It's not a competition. It's not a competition, but there's Damien. Good morning, Damien. Morning. <laughs> and the light, the light of our lives. Susan is with us. Good evening, Susan. Oh, happy to see you. You're, you're amazing. Hi, everybody. We're thrilled to see you. And, of course, we go straight from New York City to Norfolk Island. Hello again, beautiful Megan. Hello, everybody. Nice to be here. Gee, it's been an intense morning already, hasn't it, Megan? It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> We've done some hard yakka. And our favourite human, Queen Emma's in. Good, very early morning for you, Emma. Did I just get two thumbs? <sighs> Oh, that's right. That's that's okay. Um, so colleagues, welcome to Right Club. I'll give you 29 minutes. Everybody ready? I saw everyone suddenly the eyes. I saw Megan went, yeah. On. Um, so let's do this, team. See you in 29 minutes. Let's change the world one word at a time. Come on, let's do this. Let's do it. Come on, Megan. Come on, Dina. Come on.
last minute colleagues. Colleagues, we are finished. Whoa. I'll start with our favourite lifestyle programming, shall I, this week? Oh, and I've, see, the reason I'm obsessed by you, Kirsty, well, one of the many reasons I'm obsessed with you is you're a bit like me, like you shake yourself out of one state and you move to the next. You go, I'm here. So, Kirsty, tell us about what you were writing on. Um, well, today I'm addressing feedback for my first paid bar and um, ready to um, get everybody else's little bit of input and then I can send it off. So, And I'm also trying to format it in the way that the um, paper wants. So I spent that time going through some of the papers that they've already written as well. And I came across this most fascinating article, which I then got sidetracked with, um, why we need a public understanding of social science. And uh, so just like... And and um, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And I thought, oh, I love this. So, yeah, because I'm publishing in the Public Understanding of Science Journal and for my first paper. And, yeah, so and then I came across this article. So I'm like, yeah, I got a little bit distracted. Sorry, but back to no, format. No, no. So, Kirsty, I'm a bit distracted by that now. Have you got that to hand? Who's the author of that? Um, it is Jamie Lewis, Andrew Bartlett, uh, Hawk, uh, H-A-U-K-E. R-I-E-S-C-H. Yes. And, and Neil Stevens. So I know Neil. Okay, that's great. Well, I'll tell you what, th thank you for being a fantastic research officer for us all. That's fantastic. And that was that was worth the wait, darling. And look, addressing feedback and doing referencing is close to death. I understand that. Yeah. It's an absolute nightmare. So yeah. we are with you, but we're also terribly proud of you with the article. Thank you. Yeah, very exciting. My first one. <laughs> I know we did it together. See, it's Damien, Damien's aura. You see, he just encourages us all. It is, mate. You've got one of those auras. I forget which color it is. Might be the orange one. It might be the purple one. Damien, talk to us with you and your aura. What were you writing on? Is it the purple one that's the inspiration one? Someone will have to write oh, to me which no. aura. Is. I was I on spider purple aura, but that could be bad. That could be bad, Damien. Um. I was also working on peer review feedback on a book chapter I have in an edited collection, uh, The Routledge Companion to Gender and Celebrity. Um, and I'm writing about the queer television celebrity interview as methodology and how it complicates production studies and celebrity studies approaches. And I'm analysing my interview with Adam Richard, who's a Australian comedian, radio host and panellist, among other things. And he created a show called Outland and, and looking at the insights he can bring into production culture because, because of his queer celebrity status and his ability to kind of navigate both the production culture and queer politics and, uh, I guess, like queer community interests and anxieties in his answers about how the industry works. So, Damien, I'm now increasingly, obviously, I've always been obsessed by you. I'm increasingly obsessed by you. Is there an argument there about the interview with queer colleagues, queer practitioners? Is that about narrativizing queerness for the queer community or does it also have a role for narrativizing and intervening in heteronormativity? 
very much the intervening in heteronormativity and the kind of ability that you that a queer practitioner has and I take this from Joanna McIntyre who writes about her interview with Carlotta as an outsider within as a queer celebrity and being able to comment on the experiences in this case of production and their knowledge and experience and what they brought to the production process I always there's a really good example that Adam uses about uh, and everything's on the record in my interviews. Um, he talks about there being a very promiscuous character in his show and all along the middle management producers just going, but what happened to him to make him pr promiscuous? Like something bad must have happened in his life. And them having to kind of navigate this, like, well, no, that's part of like the gay male experience. You know, there are people we know who are like this and that's just what they're like. And that's part of their worldview and how they operate and it was a real challenge and they ended up having to do to sort of really present a sad story backstory not in the actual show they never used it but to the producers to say well here's a backstory of to all the bad things that happened to him to make him like this and then they just never used it in the show because they knew it would be poorly received by the community but that was their blue boating of getting this thing through production that is just phenomenal, Damien. And this is, I, I've got, I wrote down the title. So this is, you've got a book chapter in one of those great Woodledge uh, big, yeah. big, mega titles. Wow. Yeah, there's so many people in it. I like one of like 30 or 40 people in the book. I know. I mean, that's the nature of digitization now because if you bought it, the book would look something like <laughs> this, right? But you yeah. remember, they now cannibalize it. So your chapter will be downloadable. Oh, it's exciting. That's the plan. Hopefully, oh. some citations. <laughs> You'll get mine for sure. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Damien, you're an absolute legend. Rock and roll, mate. Um, right. Should we should we go to the legendary Lorraine who has to put up with me too often in life? Now, what were you writing on, my queen? Come um, on. I was writing about a film that was made uh, in the nineties about the Vietnam Veterans Motorcycle Club. So one of the research participants had mentioned this film. I acquired it by DVD, which I was really lucky to do. Uh, sorry, that was 1974 the film came out. Um, so I'm writing about that. And then I went and found, because um, that opens up so much more area for research, um, they reenacted the initial motorbike scene. I think the film had 400 bikes, but the reenactment had 35,000 bikes turned out for it. Um, yeah, and I think they do it annually now as a, a tribute to the film. Um, very low budget, really Australian. Uh, yes, and then I've just found another documentary that was 25 years after um, and a memorial ride to the writer and director. So I was just writing about that, actually, just to include that in the thesis that there's this whole, because he designed the back patch and he gave the copyrights to the Vietnam veterans to wear the, the back patch, which is still being used today. So there's that whole history, which I just find really fascinating. Yeah, so that's what I was doing. That yeah. is amazing. Yeah, I know. Like, I tell oh. you, and and I, you used a, a, a word I haven't heard in some time. I believe you described it as a DVD. That is. Yes, yes, yes. It, there's box things, yeah. That... <laughs> I, but I tell you what, it adds, can I just be sort of a weird examiner on this? It adds a lot of interest for examiners when you have your reference list and you also do it by by source, by platform or mode. So yes. if you can have multimodal material, we love that. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Well done, Lorraine. You're Thank you. Superstar. And look, let's go to the other light of our lives, Queen Beck, the Beckster. Beckster, what were you writing on, gorgeous creature? Um. Uh, let's just say that it wasn't research related. It was governments and supporting students and ensuring fairness and consistency across markers. There it is. And yeah. was was that exciting writing or was that that was intense writing? Um, it was intense writing. I did a lot of cross marking overnight last night and found a huge discrepancy, which was very um, it unfairly advantaged some students and unfairly disadvantaged others. So, <clears throat> pardon me. Yeah, it was just a funny way. We've got large student cohorts. We have about a thousand students in the first year subject. And the first assessment task was submitted a week and a half ago. Wow. I mean, Bexter, in the old days, um, and I am that old, in the old days, if there was more than a grade separating uh, two, two results, you'd go to a third. Do that, does that still be in existence or is that as old as I am? No. Um, no. Yeah. But, yeah, no. 
don't do it that way. We um go through, we moderate all the markers and things like that. So yeah, it yeah. Sorry, I'm just I'm tired now. I know you are. I can, I can see. But can I say you've done a great right. service. You've done a great service to those students by doing that. Thank you. No, and that's, the, that's the advantage in having two kids that are studying in undergrad as well too and things. And that's the reason why I pursue. So, yeah, I've had an interesting dialogue with one of them who's come back and sort of arguing their particular point. And it's like, no, actually, it's about ensuring consistency across so that it's fair for everybody. Yes, and it links in with our last conversation, Digital Office Hours, can I say, where it's not a matter of quality, it's about quality assurance. It's not that you think it's quality. I'm sure you do, girlfriend. We wish you well. It's about assuring that quality to other humans. Yep, absolutely. Every student that submits their assessment to us submits 100%. That is glorious. Well, Bexter, you you have either a cup of coffee or drink your own body weight in Chardonnay at this point because you deserve it. Oh, you can't see it? Diet Coke. Diet Coke. Oh, I got terribly excited there. Did anybody else? I suddenly went, oh, my goodness me, what is that? Are you starting to drink your own body weight in Chardonnay? No. I'm good on you, Bex. Good on you, Bexter. We're proud of you. Um, Thank you. Should we go to the Ambassador of Norfolk Island? Good morning, Ambassador of Norfolk Island. Good morning. Are we after, oh, good afternoon from Norfolk Island. <laughs> yes. It is too. It is. Yes. My mistake. <laughs> So I've been writing on the principles and stages of development of a lived, the lived experience program that I am researching. Um, so just doing up tables and trying to get stuff together to send to my supervisors for comment. And how's that working for you, Dal? Uh, it's kept me awake for the last couple of nights because I haven't had the time to do it. And I just decided that this half hour was it. I was just slamming it, so I've done that. Well, I've done the rough coffee. I'll I'll go and um, clean it up this afternoon. But I also have a comment for um, oh gosh, was it who were we talking to just a moment ago? Was it Mary? Was it the was it the Beck? Was it was it about Beck and her doing quality assurance, or was no, it, the, it Lorraine, Lorraine and the motorcycle gang? It was Lorraine and the motorcycle yeah. gang. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. No, sorry, sorry, Lorraine. Yeah. So Lorraine, um, my father was a three tour veteran. Um, and I'm from the Bayless family, which is a very Australian motorcycle, very famous Australian motorcycle family in Australia. But do you think I saw my father on a motorbike? Uh, uh. And when I wanted a motorbike, do you think he'd let me have one? Uh, uh. Yeah, so I was really interested to hear what you were saying. And comment to everybody that always goes before me, I always feel so inferior after listening to everything that you guys are doing it's just so brilliant and thank you all for sharing it look it, it. it's so inspirational isn't it megan and always remember you are just you are the light of our lives firstly megan and also remember you've just started you've just started so da Damien and I remain in absolute in awe of you. You are stunning. And every week, and particularly I love what you've done there because you've you've done the hard thing first. So you've gone, this is hard. And you know what? During this half an hour, I'm going to take a big bite out of the hard. Yeah, I tried to eat that frog. Come on. Rather yes. than boil the frog. I'm a bit of a boiler myself. You go, Megan. You're, a, you're amazing, bless you. Shall we go to the best haircut in Australia? Tag and Darlin, what were you working on? Yeah, well, I've got to say, I'm pretty reliant on my haircut this week. I'm like clogged up, sick, and I'm having a really, really um, like the feedback I got yesterday was you're writing like a scientist, like a natural scientist, not a social scientist. You need to get a better narrative happening. And it just makes me want to, like, oh, this is too hard, all this interdisciplinary. Um, because I only have a natural science supervisor who's constantly brief is good, dot points are better, keep it like, so just like absolutely like I, I, you know, I'm going over this um, a draft paper this morning and just trying to imagine uh, narrativizing whilst hanging on to interview integrity whilst um trying to talk about resource management governance I'm feeling very like lucky my hair cuts good Tara because the yeah. rest of it is feeling a bit like in a in a whirlpool of uh sink drain 
Now, mate, mate, let's let's all take a breath as a family. Whenever that sort of stuff happens, you know, interdisciplinarity, post-disciplinarity, I, I live in that world, Paul, and you get all sorts of things. This is not history. This is not science. This is not physics. This is not mathematics. I always take that wallpaper off the wall, take the layers of the wallpaper off to look at what's going on with the wall. And by that, I mean what serves the project. So what writing style enables your research questions to be answered? What modality of writing allows you to have integrity around those interviews and interview materials? Make it about serving the research questions and serving the research and sort of get the wallpaper off of, you know, this is science, this is social science. The differences aren't that great. The differences aren't that great. Knowledge is knowledge. Disciplines are arbitrary and invented and they're invented to empower the empowered. So if we want to re-empower disempowered communities, we're going to have to break down some of those silos. Ah, you're the lady I needed this morning. Good on you. Yeah. So, mate, just think about what you're doing is, you know, when you're in one of those old houses and people have put on rubbish wallpaper and you've got to get there, you've got to get that damn wallpaper. Have you ever done that, Tegan, mate? You ever taken wallpaper? Off the wall? Yeah. And, and you're going, you lazy mongrels, because they put wallpaper over wallpaper over wallpaper. Like, just remove the wallpaper. Right? So you've done the hard yakker. And then you look at the wall and you ask yourself, why did anybody cover that in the first place? Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and that, that's what research is. You can invent all these methodologies and disciplines and stuff, or you can go, what serves the research? And that's what you're doing. That's great. Thanks, Tara. You are amazing. We'll, we'll check back next week, see how we're going. You're amazing. And should we go to the other legendary human doing incredible work? Good morning, Emma. Very good early morning to Emma. How are you, darling? Yes, so hopefully you can hear me, but how am are, I on sound? You are, darling. What were you working on, Superstar? Adjustment. Uh, what I was working on was trying to update my research proposal and having watched your What Makes a PhD a PhD, I'm trying to write the section on what is my original significant contribution to knowledge and kind of going, how original is this? How significant is that? Hmm. So that, that's what I've been up to. And Emma, it's hard writing, isn't it? It's very hard to do. It is, yeah. It, it all seems clear in your head and then you write it down, you look at it and you think, is it really that original? Is it really that significant? Significance, the hard one. When we finish off with the finisher, Dina, we'll, we'll explore the nature of significance. Significance, the hard one, but it's the one that renders it meaningful. The renders mm -hmm. the research meaningful, but you're you're legendary having a go. It will change examiner's approach to the work. Well, I I want to actually change the words. So uh, the, the 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 world. I want to change the way HRE sees up human research ethics committees work. I want to change the way that evaluated guidelines internationally work. That will be significant if I can pull it off, but we'll see. I think you've just answered your own question. That's brilliant. That's significant. Good on you, Emma. Can't manage without you. Shall we go to the glamorous vista before us, the legendary Ruth? Good morning, Ruth. What were you working on, my love? Good morning. Um, I have been, I've got my confirmation <clears throat> of candidature presentation coming up um, at the in the middle of next month. So I've been working on the script for my presentation. So trying to pull out the key bits from my research proposal and turn it into something engaging. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I've been working on this morning. And ha have you found it straightforward? Because it's, it's a complicated speech to write because you are speaking to documents. So you've got these beautiful, complicated, dense documents and you're speaking to it. It's hard writing, isn't it? Yeah, and then... Yeah, trying to find out which bits to focus on without kind of going down a rabbit hole um, and then trying to make it interesting for the audience, which is, you know, going to be made up of the review panel and, you know, other people. Um, so, yeah, trying to find that balance. Well done, you. So it's hard writing. You got it. You'll be amazing. Can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see it. You're fantastic. And should we now go for our weekly dose of incredible inspiration? Good evening, Susan. Good evening to you, you legendary human. 
Good evening, everybody. I worked, I did not write, I wrote earlier today. Because it's, it's what is after 9 p.m. here in the New York City area. But what I did during the writing session was I reassembled uh, my academic writing schedule for the rest of this year and into next year based on what I have learned about myself and my writing style and my interests and the interests of other people and other people who want some of my work to publish and da 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 da. I rearranged things. Ooh. So things that I was planning on doing in August that I didn't start yet because I was doing other things, I'm now doing those in January. And things that I fit, thought I had finished in July, I'm actually taking another look at them and rewriting them for publication Very good. based Very on good. comments from others. So that's what I spent the 30 minutes doing. Oh, Susan, that, that sounds like a life transformation at 30 minutes, that. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, and, Susan, can I just say, as someone who's only met you in the last six weeks or so, I am desperate. Any work that you get published, I am there. I am absolutely there. You are you're one of the most innovative brains I think I've ever come across in my life. You're remarkable, Susan. I'll let everybody know if anything gets published. You'll be among the first to know. Oh. Or second we are, we are so there. We are your biggest fan club, Susan. We are your biggest fan club. You are legendary. Oh, oh, you're amazing. And look, we'll we'll go to wonderful Ian. Ian, how are you, mate? I have been worried about you today. How are you going, brother? Can I do oh, I finally found the unmute button, which was off my screen. Uh, um, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing well. Uh, I've been, I'm a bit tired too, because I've just been working flat out this week on uh, my Swedish Council grant application, which I've, I've been working on in Right Club for the last few weeks. <laughs> um, and uh, just, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, hours and hours and days and weeks and weeks. And um, I'm slowly getting there. Um, and, um, and I also found out that the closing date for applications is 10 days earlier than I thought it was. Because, you know, I have this weird ADHD brain that reads things and sees things completely different than what are written on the page. It said the 12th of September, and then some, I just got it in my head that it was the 22nd. Um, so um, it's, a bit, it's going to be a bit of a rush to get it in. But, I mean, so, yeah, today I'm getting there. I've got, got the, the hardest part written with the responses to the feedback from the committee um you know all the all the edits that i needed to make and uh, so today i was uh, writing on i was uh, work, uh, concentrating on writing my abstract which is 1500 characters max um yeah of, to describe a three year research project mm -hmm. and uh, so i basically during our half hour i wrote and deleted and wrote and deleted the same paragraph for half an hour <laughs> yeah, it is. Ab abstracts are a nightmare. I'm doing one at the moment uh, and it's just horrific because when you're doing the really big projects, to distill it down is so challenging without reifying. So I I'm with you, Ian. Yeah. And look, I'll be glad when you submit it, to be honest, because I think that'll be a real mental movement from this to the next stage for you. Mm. I do think that. It'll be a relief. Yeah. So oh. only a few more days. Okay, everybody send all their amazing energy uh, and Damien's aura. If we think it's purple, we think it might be yellow, we don't know, but we're sending all Damien's aura in your direction, Ian. Hang in there, mate. Fantastic. And here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? So Dina, Dina, I tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose my mind when Dina submits this thesis. Just so you know, my head is gonna open and little zombies are gonna come out and they're gonna dance and it's just gonna, I'm gonna lose my mind. So Dina, woo, yeah, what do we do? Come on, Dina, come on, Dina. Um, so my um date of completion is still January, so it's still a bit far, but yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I'm, uh. I had a bad news last uh this week because my um mother in law got sick and hospitalized. So that's why I I, I had to go down to another city and uh, work my thesis there uh, here. Um, oh, but, oh sorry, Angel. So sorry. That's all right. Um, she's getting better, so it's uh yeah, it's uh gradually getting better, so it's good. Um, I got um the response from my supervisor on my result chapter. 
So um, <laughs> the first uh, sentence in the email read, um, don't be disheartened uh, if there's a lot of revision, which uh, there are. So, uh, but um, I'm glad that she accepted the approach. So when we had the supervisory meeting, um, uh, we talked about the traditional Straussian uh, grounded uh, theory, which is more linear in its model. And But what I came across my data, it's more complex. So there's the action interaction uh, condition, um, intervening condition, context. It's more, it's more um, um, dynamic than um, the usual uh, linear model. <clears throat> as uh, tra uh, transcribed by the uh, um, the paradigm model is called. So um, I asked my supervisor whether I could um, explore to this conditional and consequential matrix, which could accommodate um, the same uh, condition. So uh, she didn't say anything before, but when I submitted it with the reasoning, um, although it got a lot of revisions, she wanted a more tighter coding around uh, around the um, actual coding stage. So that's what I was working on. But um, uh, in general sense, I feel relieved that um, it's a good in a positive way. Um, so she, she said uh, uh, we could go with um, the alternative, um, alternative data analysis that I have been um, working on. So yeah. <laughs> I'm doing the revision right now. Uh, the deadline is on the 16th, so I have to resubmit the result chapter to her, to her by then. Dina, we are so proud of you. And look, courage Thank is you. rewarded. And the nature of grounded theory, and Tegan, I was just looking at you when Dina was speaking. See how sort of the gatekeeping and the tightening of theories and disciplines and paradigms operates. You know, this is grounded theory, this is not grounded theory, whereas, of course, grounded theory emerges from the data sets. So the notion is, all right, well, this is how you configure uh, the theory from this data set. This is the singular way of reading the data set is, is very interesting. So I just hope when, I, when Dina was speaking, I looked straight at you going, the way that disciplines and paradigms are shaped has an arbitrariness to it. And your courage taken and Dina's courage in going, this is what my data set reveals. This is the alternative saturations of data that have revealed themselves. And this is the story that is being told. So Dina, we are so proud of you. You've got this, well done. This was a major and courageous moment and you deserve this success, all right? You're the best. Wonderful colleagues, I thank you for an incredible, Megan, hasn't that been incredible? An incredible Friday morning, earnest, tough, powerful, and that's just Damien's aura. So colleagues, I wish you all every success and happiness through your day. Susan, sleep well. You are a light and so inspirational to us. You are unbelievable, Susan. And colleagues, have a lovely rest of the day and see you soon. And Lorraine, enjoy that uh, DVD, was it? DVD. Enjoy that. Colleagues, take care. Look after yourselves. You're the best. Blessings.